Hey everybody, gonna be doing a quick tutorial here on how we hooked our switcher software up with a MIDI controller. This is a Behringer X-Touch Mini. We got it for about 60 bucks. Um, and with that, and along with three softwares, uh, one of which costs about $20, you can get a MIDI controller for your ATEM switcher, the Blackmagic switcher. So I'm gonna show you how we do it, show you how we did it, show you how we set it up. Um, it's not that hard to figure out. Um, I'll show you guys how to do it. So, you're gonna need three softwares here. One of them, of course, is the ATEM software control. You'll need that to run your actual switcher. One you're gonna download called Osculator. Um, there's two versions online, depending on which uh, version you have of, of uh, iOS. And uh, ATEM OSC. And basically the ATEM OSC is what is going to allow Osculator and the ATEM switcher software to talk to each other. So. You'll run the ATEM OSC, and again, this is on your switcher computer, and you'll need your switcher IP address in there. You'll need, it'll pop up with the name, and you'll need your local host IP address in there, which is 127.0.0.1. You can leave the incoming port at uh, 3333 and the outgoing port at 4444. Um, you'll get a green light there if that works. This is for a tally interface. Um, I haven't messed with that much, but it doesn't make a difference in this part of it. So you can minimize that. You can open up your ATM controller software. And open up Osculator, and I'm gonna show you how to, how to connect these two. So I've already got my uh, X-Touch Mini plugged in. You can see there's, there's two separate modes. Um, this is the standard mode and there's also an MC mode, which is Mackie control mode. To get it on Mackie control mode, I'll unplug it and there's a button down here in the bottom left corner that says MC. You'll hold that in as you plug it in until the lights flash um, and then you'll be on MC mode. You can operate in MC mode if you want. I was having some issues with uh, the slider values because it doesn't run 0 to 127. It's got some weird funky... Um, numbers because it runs like a pitch bend this would be more for like using this with garage band or pro tools type thing but it works pretty well with these uh, the only issue is if somebody accidentally switches between layer a and layer b i set all of ours up on layer a but i'm going to go back and copy them over to layer b but anyway so you get your x touch mini plugged in or whatever mini controller you're using and on the osculator here we're going to go to our settings you're going to go over to devices and on your MIDI input ports, you can make sure that X-Touch Mini is selected and you can unselect Osculator. And then on your MIDI output, you need Osculator out selected. Input mode, you can leave uninterpreted. You don't have to mess with the MIDI notes, param settings or any of that. So go ahead and close that out. Now you can see it says empty message list, waiting for input running and the routing has started. Now, unless you purchase license key, it will interrupt you every few minutes, uh, prompting you to, to purchase it. So the way that you'll purchase that, you go to Osculator, go to License Info, and you will it'll be an option here to purchase a license key. It's only $20, and I would highly recommend it. It's a, it's a good part of this whole process. So once you've got your license key and you've got the, the licensed version, we can work on, on getting these things routed. So if you'll notice now, anything I do on my MIDI controller is sending an incoming message on the monitor down there on the bottom. We're just showing the incoming messages. You can switch it to in and out to see a little, a little more dynamic part of it. But this is what's gonna help you uh, assign all your functions. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to take, and I've already got this thing labeled, but I'm wanting to take this top row for my program buttons and the bottom row for my preview buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit what I've labeled as camera one program. So when I hit that, under my monitor there, it shows me what happened. It says note on G sharp two um, and then note off. So on the note on part, that's what I want to assign to um, my program for camera one program. So I'll click on this arrow here, new MIDI template from selection and again this is on the on part of the button so it happens when we push it not when we let go and under here it's pulling up a template it wants me to name it so I will name it cam one program this is my own labeling 
You don't have to mess with any of this stuff up here. Send when any value is processed, you can leave that. You'll click receive OSC message on matching MIDI input. And you can label this again, cam one program. And you'll, you'll see this will help us here in a second. So these OSC messages are what Oscillator sends to ATEM OSC, which then sends it to the ATEM control software and so on and so forth. So that's how they talk to each other between that. So these OSC messages are going to be um, very important and I'll show you what they are and, and how we're going to address them. So now that we've got that set up, you'll see, I can close this out. Now when I hit CAM1, CAM1 program pops up here on the top. So now it's not just a bunch of MIDI notes, 11 and all that. CAM1 program shows up. So I'm going to set my event type to an OSC message on CAM1 program. And under value, I'm going to go to new. Now, this is where we set our OSC commands, our OSC addresses, to tell it what to tell this switcher software to do. So you'll leave it on that thing um, under address. You'll double click on that. So now it says rewrite address. Now, what does that mean? I wanna show you. So, go ahead and open up your ATEM OSC again. And under the help section, if you go to OSC addresses, it pulls all these up. So any function that you're wanting to do, it tells you the code for it right here. This is the address that you put in. Now, I may go ahead and, and, up, and upload my export file of these because I've used quite a bit of them and just exported them. So you'll be able to upload those as long as they, um, you know, as long as you know uh, what they go to, it'll make sense for you um, because these are universal for everybody's. So, Let's see, so I'm wanting, you can see you get your transitions there, transition type. If you scroll down, it will show you your sources. Now this is where a lot of your stuff is going to come from. So, as you can see, we've already got all our stuff labeled in the ATEM, and I'm wanting this to be camera one program, which is right there. So it's slash ATEM slash program slash five, because camera one is an input five. So, I'm going to go back to setting my parameters here, click back onto my address, and I will say slash ATEM slash program slash five. Of course, you can copy and paste too if you want. Um, and that's all you gotta do there. So go ahead and hit enter, close that puppy out. Now, let me set my program to something else so I can show you that it works. You can see here too, when I hit cam one program, it switches over to camera one on our on our switcher now. So that one's set and you know it works, so you can test them. So you can go through and set all your your programs that way. Go through. It's got all your sources on here that you'll need. And what you'll do for a preview, you'll use the exact same suffix on the end of it, but you'll just switch the word program to preview. And I'll show you that here. So I won't I want to set my cam one preview now, but I'm not gonna say program, I'll type in preview. So, and it's easy too if you clear out this log because um, it just shows you all your activity. So now I'm gonna push my cam one, what I want my cam one preview button to be. And you can see it pops up there, note E1 on that kind of thing. So you click on the same thing there, new MIDI template from section, selection. I'll name it cam one preview, receive OSC message, Change your label, cam one preview. Go ahead and close that out. So now when I hit my cam one preview button, bam, it pops up on there too. I can change my event type, OSC message, value. Go ahead and create a new one. Same process, click under same address, slash atom, slash preview, slash Five. Go ahead and hit enter. I forgot to say too, make sure that when you go to this OSC tab under the settings, make sure that this says ATEM OSC UDP. Um, it should default to that because you've had your uh, ATEM OSC open, but it, um, make sure that that's what that says there. ATEM OSC UDP. So now that we got the preview button set, we can change our preview with this button too now. Boop. There you go. So that's how you set all those. You can set all your programs, 
all your previews. There's also transition buttons. If you look under ATEM OSCs, uh, back up at the top, there are codes. They've got one for your bar, which I'll show you how to set your T-bar here with this slider dealie. Um, a cut, auto transition, fade to black, um, transition type, you can add those on there if you want. We just added auto and cut. So let me show you how to set the T-bar. So the T-bar is a little different in setting that. You can see the address is ATIM slash transition slash bar. And if you notice, when you move the bar up and down, under there it says control nine. So it's coming through on, on control nine for the Behringer. So up here at the top, and the way you sort these, you can click on, um, click to sort it by activity. So that way the one that you're moving is always up at the top there. So, so you go to event type, OSC message, click on value. And now this one, our address is going to be slash atom slash transition slash bar. I'll apply that. Now you can see if I get this out of the way, that moves my slider there. Okay, so let me go ahead and load um, the software or the settings that I've I've set so I can show you a full profile of this. I've got this full thing set up here. Anything I switch on here is going to switch on there. I can use that for my transitions. Um, it's a pretty neat little tool for only about 60 bucks plus 20 for the license. So we've got all our previews down here, all our programs up there. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me about this stuff. I sat around and kind of play with it. I know there's a lot more that we could probably do, but this is a good start. All these have the ability, these knobs here are uh, a 13 point or a 26 point knob that we can use to adjust things to. Um, also clicking them in can do something. Um, I just did notice that on the addresses that were kind of limited as to like as far as adjusting audio or things on the cameras but I, I do believe there's a way to find the parameters for that and to set that to so again I will upload um, my export settings with all the the addresses on it and everything so you guys can have those and import those um, if you just want to start with everything that I've got set up you'll probably just need to change uh, your labels if to make them make sense for you guys because we've got you know camera one camera two camera three the iMac there you can see popping up um, but yeah that's how you do it let me know if you guys have any questions